Did you know that about 40 cents of every dollar spent on building maintenance goes into floor care? If not picked up daily, all kinds of dirt and grit can destroy protective hard surface finishes. Most commercial resilient floors require regular cleaning, scrubbing, and burnishing. Periodically, hard floor will need to be stripped of old floor finish and have new floor finish applied. In this module, you'll learn how to dust mop and wet mop floors, how to burnish and scrub hard floors, and how to strip and apply finish to hard floors. Let's get started. Daily dust mopping helps extend the life of a hard floor and presents a customer-pleasing appearance. To dust mop, you need putty knife, disposable dust mop system, broom and dustpan, waste receptacle, floor hazard signs, lint-free or microfiber cloths, and neutral cleaner. Before you begin, inspect and inventory cleaning equipment. Remove spills from the floor. Use a putty knife to remove foreign substances. Follow all standard safety procedures, including placing floor hazard signs every 20 feet. Make sure they are visible from all directions. Dust mopping is not as easy as you might think. Technique matters. If a dust mop is used incorrectly, the dust and grit can be redeposited all over the room. Begin by dust mopping along the baseboard, moving forward. Overlap each stroke to be sure to capture all dust and dirt. Dust mop behind doors and underneath furniture. When you are finished, pick up debris pile with broom and dustpan and empty dustpan into trash container. Remove the disposable dusting pad and dispose. Return equipment and supplies to their storage area, and wash your hands. Let's quickly review how to dust mop. Clean spills and remove gum. Start dust mopping along the baseboard or wall. Overlap each stroke. Now it's time to wet mop the floor. Daily wet mopping removes water-soluble stains and soil from the floor and extends the time between stripping and applying floor finish. For wet mopping, you'll need floor hazard signs, standard or microfiber mopping system, lint-free or microfiber cloths, neutral or disinfectant cleaning solution, and personal protective equipment. As always, review the appropriate material safety data sheets and put on personal protective equipment. Note that Janaking recommends that you wear eye protection and gloves whenever you mix chemicals. Fill the bucket with water and add neutral or neutral disinfectant cleaning solution following the manufacturer's recommendations. Place floor hazard signs wherever necessary. Before you start mopping, here are a few tips about posture. Good posture minimizes effort and prevents back discomfort. Holding the mop too far away from your body or leaning into the mop could cause a backache. Keep a straight back and bend at the knees. When mopping, hold the mop handle at a slight angle from vertical, which allows the mop to pass just in front of the feet. The operation is then controlled with the body as well as the arms. Dip the mop into solution and lightly wring. Start mopping in a location furthest away from the door. Work backwards and mop the floor along the edge of the baseboard. Once the baseboard area is done, continue to mop the rest of the area using a figure eight motion, overlapping strokes. If you splash baseboards, walls, or furniture, wipe clean before the solution dries. Change the mop head when it becomes soiled and change the cleaning solution in the bucket as needed. Leave floor hazard signs in place until floor is completely dry. Clean mop head according to the manufacturer's recommendations. 
Turn on the faucet in the janitor's sink and pour solution into the drain as the water is running. Rinse out the bucket and return equipment to its proper storage area. Remove personal protective equipment and wash your hands. Let's review how to wet mop. Start along edge of baseboard and work backwards. Wipe splashed solution from baseboards or furniture immediately. Mop the rest of the area using a figure eight motion overlapping strokes. Now we're going to explain a very important floor cleaning technique called high-speed burnishing. High-speed burnishing is an efficient and economical way to keep floors clean, safe, and attractive while extending time between stripping and refinishing. Here's the equipment you'll need. Microfiber dust mop. Dust pan and broom. Standard or microfiber mopping system. Restorer solution. Lint-free or microfiber cloths. Neutral or disinfectant cleaning solution. Personal protective equipment. High-speed burnisher. Appropriate floor pads. Waste receptacle. And floor hazard signs. Remember, safety is your first priority. Review the material safety data sheets. And note that Janneking recommends that you wear eye protection and gloves whenever you mix chemicals. With any electrical equipment, always check cords for damage and never leave the equipment plugged in and unattended. Use only electrical outlets that are not currently in use or have been designated by the client to power your equipment. And remember to place floor hazard signs in appropriate locations. Before you start burnishing, the floor must be dust mopped and wet mopped. When the floor is completely dry, apply mop-on restorer solution using the same mopping technique you learned earlier. Allow the floor to dry. Tilt the machine and attach the appropriate burnishing pad. With the head of the high-speed burnisher tilted up off the floor, start the machine. Set the burnisher upright and immediately begin to move forward. Never start the burnisher when the burnishing pad is in contact with the floor. Overlap each pass of the burnisher. Check the pad frequently and flip the pad occasionally to maintain effectiveness. Continue to move forward and backward until the entire floor presents a brilliant shine. Burnishing creates dust, so when you are finished, you will need to dust mop the floor again, making sure you dust behind doors. When it's time to clean up, remove the floor pad and position pad over a utility sink. Use the neutral cleaner and spray pad surface. Scrub the pad using centerpiece from pad and rinse with clear water. Hang pads and centerpiece to dry. Pads must be thoroughly dried before they can be used again. Clean and put away all remaining equipment and floor hazard signs. Remove personal protective equipment and wash your hands. Let's review how to high-speed burnish. Thoroughly dust mop and wet mop the floor. Wet mop floor with restorer and allow it to dry. Attach burnishing pad to the high-speed burnisher. Start machine with pad off the floor, then move forward with the machine as soon as pad comes in contact with the floor. Overlap each pass. Flip the pad over when it becomes soiled. Change pad as necessary. When you are through, thoroughly dust mop the floor. Now we'll explain how to scrub floors. Scrubbing removes a portion of the top layer of floor finish, which contains the majority of the soil, heel marks, dirt deposits, and grit. Scrubbing is performed prior to applying floor finish. For scrubbing, you will need furniture moving equipment, microfiber dust mop, 
dustpan and broom, one microfiber mopping system and one standard mopping system. Standard 175 RPM low-speed floor machine. Scrubbing pads. Wet-dry vacuum. Waste receptacle. Floor hazard signs. Clean, lint-free or microfiber cloths. Neutral cleaning solution. Personal protective equipment. It's always a good idea before you start any major floor maintenance procedure to check that furniture and walls are not marred or damaged. If you find damage, report it to your client. Remove furnishings and other items from work area using material handling equipment if necessary. Prior to moving items, note their location. Return furnishings to their proper location after you complete your work. Place floor hazard signs where necessary. Pick up any large debris and dust mop hard floor. When working with cleaning solutions, always review the material safety data sheets. And remember to wear personal protective equipment when mixing chemicals. Mix the neutral cleaning solution in the mop bucket. Start away from the door. Using a standard mop, Liberally apply solution to a section of floor. Only wet a workable area that can be scrubbed before the solution dries on the floor. Attach appropriate pad to the 175 RPM low-speed floor machine. Adjust machine handles. Starting where you first applied solution, begin to scrub the floor. Scrub until the floor is free of soil, scuffs, and black marks. Scrubbing pads require frequent cleaning. Inspect pad often and change if necessary. Remove soiled solution from the floor using a wet-dry vacuum. Using a clean microfiber mopping system, rinse the area with cool, clear water. When you are finished, Spray the pad with the neutral cleaner. Scrub the pad using centerpiece from pad and rinse with clear water. Hang pads and centerpiece to dry. Remove personal protective equipment and wash your hands. Put away floor hazard signs when the floor is completely dry. Let's review how to scrub floors. Start away from the door and work backwards. Apply solution to a workable section of floor. Scrub area with a low-speed 175 RPM floor machine. Remove soiled solution with a wet-dry vacuum. And rinse the area using cool, clean water. Constant foot traffic eventually drives dirt, soil, and grit deep into the floor finish. When this happens, the floor needs to be stripped of the floor finish to prepare it for new coats of finish. Stripping as well as refinishing floors is a job that requires advanced planning. There are additional preparation steps, from moving furniture to scheduling the right number of people to do the job. Consult with client regarding when to schedule stripping and finishing jobs and about moving office equipment. The equipment and supplies you need to complete this task are Material handling equipment Waste receptacle Floor hazard signs Microfiber dust mop Broom and dustpan Painter's blue masking tape Plastic drop cloths Walk-off mats or flattened cardboard boxes Putty knife Clean sponge Black stripping pad low-speed 175 RPM floor machine, utility pad holder with scrubbing pads, wet-dry vacuum, two standard mopping systems, and one microfiber mopping system, clean lint-free or microfiber cloths, neutral cleaning solution, personal protective equipment, stripping shoe covers, stripper concentrate, ample supply of clean rags, and air movers. Place hazard signs every 20 feet.
Make sure they are visible from all directions. Now you are ready to begin. Pick up loose debris and dust mop the entire area to be stripped. To prepare the work area for stripping, place painter's blue masking tape on adjoining areas that are not being stripped at the time. Attach the tape to the floor in a straight line. Then attach a plastic drop cloth at least three feet wide to the tape to prevent splashing solution onto the adjoining floor. If locked doors lead into areas not scheduled for stripping, mask or place rags tightly under the door to prevent seepage. And be sure to place a walk-off mat at the edge of the work area on which to wipe soiled shoes when exiting the room. Follow all safety precautions. Review the material safety data sheets. And note that Janiking recommends that you wear eye protection and gloves whenever you mix chemicals. Prepare the stripping solution in a bucket according to the manufacturer's recommendation. Fill a mop bucket with clear water and put in a clean sponge to clean up spills and splashes. The requirement that you wear slip-resistant, stripping shoe covers or rubber-soled shoes is important. The stripping solution will create a slippery condition as it breaks down the old finish. All crew members, especially floor machine operators, must exercise caution when walking on a surface to which stripping solution has been applied. Have all necessary equipment and supplies available and lined up before beginning the job to minimize additional trips to the storage area. Liberally mop stripping solution onto the floor. Wet an area that can be worked satisfactorily, typically 150 to 200 square feet. Allow stripping solution sufficient dwell time for the chemicals to begin to break down the old finish. Avoid allowing stripping solution to dry on hard surface floors. If it does, Stripping solution must be reapplied. You must scrub the corners and edges by hand to avoid moving the floor machine close to the wall, which could cause damage or scratches. Attach the appropriate scrubbing pad to the utility pad holder and scrub along the edges. Use a putty knife and a small handheld pad in corners or other tight areas. Wipe any stripping solutions splashed on the baseboards or other unmasked surfaces immediately. Next, prepare the low-speed floor machine. Attach the black stripping floor pad. Adjust machine handles for optimum operating height. Scrub the floor, moving the machine from right to left. Pick up the soiled stripping solution using a wet-dry vacuum. Inspect the floor to ensure the old floor finish has been completely removed. Applying a finish without removing the spots will ruin an other.